Yeah, I know. I'm more regular. I didn't have to use brace and brace. I don't have to put it on the back burner. No, I Almighty and everlasting God, who presides over all things in heaven and earth, come and preside over these deliberations so that those that make the decisions may be guided by your wisdom. Good evening. Roll call. Mr. Barrett? Here. Ms. Gilbert? Present. Mr. Merritt? Here. Mr. Belusco? Here. And um, Mr. Brooks? <laughs> Chairperson, <Here>. Chairperson <laughs> Brooks? Also in attendance tonight is Deputy Administrator, City Attorney Tim Henry, Deputy Fire Chief Alan Clappett, Director of OCD, Joyce Zikowski, Adam Olver, Olver uh, Animal Enforcement Officer, Assistant City Clerk Catherine Payne, and Administrative Assistant Lisa Sanfilippo. There is one announcement regarding the agenda. The third resolu resolution on the consent agenda uh, relative to the parking ticket appointments uh, appeals board will be removed from the consent agenda in favor of three separate resolutions voted on individually. The other 10 resolutions on the consent agenda will remain on it and addressed as one. Okay. Welcome statement. Good evening and welcome to all. Tonight's meeting is a regular session of council. <coughs> Please turn off all cell phones. According to the First Amendment, this meeting is limited or designated public meeting, as all regular sessions of City Council are. The chairperson is a presiding officer of the meeting. As a City Council meeting, specific rules and procedures of Council are followed. The list below are examples of important Council rules. They are not intended to be a complete list. They are adhere as closely as possible to the five-minute speaker registration time limit for all. Persons addressing the council shall limit their address to five minutes. All remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and not to any individual member thereof. No persons are allowed to address the council from beyond the rail, except the speaker at the dais who has the floor. The chairperson shall preserve order and decorum, prevent attacks on personalities, or the impugning of members' motives. Chairperson shall also determine all points of order and persons authorized to be within the rail no person except city officers or the representatives shall be permitted within the rail in front of the council during any meeting without the express permission of the council. Finally, in order to be heard by all here in attendance, as well as to be picked up by the microphones and recorders, when members of administration are speaking, please stand up, speak into a microphone. The council will speak into their microphone, microphones, phones at the table as well. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on legislation pending before council tonight? Mr. Karabowski. Good evening. Uh, this is talk, uh, talk about this parking appointment? Yes. Okay. Uh, where's Mr. Wample or the mayor? Because I'd like to know where they're at. Mr. Okay. Wample's at a League of Cities. Can you hear me now? Can you just turn that up? Sam can't hear me. That's it. Oh. Uh, I don't even know what to say. When I seen Marcelo Lindaki's name in the paper that they are going to put her on this board, 
Has this administration finally lost their mind after what has transpired here the last month and a half with what happened with Mr. Hayward getting an $18,000 pension by coming back to work for a few days? But my thing is this administration has finally lost their minds. And I am going to ask the council not to put her in this position. It's her, Mr. Wample, and the mayor have already cost us several hundred thousands of dollars. She was a failure as the chief, a complete and disastrous failure as the chief. She has caused nothing but trouble, and it's costing the taxpayers money every week that this nonsense went on with her. How could this administration possibly even put her name on for this board? And how could she be fair? She's not a stable person, and that is my position, my personal position. But the Chief of Police Association spelled it out the best. How do we expect her to come in here for this board? This is the most ridiculous, asinine, I can't, I don't even know how to express myself. I'm so disgusted and so is everybody else. I am gonna urge this council not to put her on this board. Look at what she caused. She is trouble. And the trouble that she caused, even now that she's gone, we are going to pay. Wait till they start getting depositions. I want this council to say no. We do not need her there. Why? And I don't even know why she wants to be there. Can't she take her seventy-two or seventy-three thousand dollar pension and go away? She's like Hillary Clinton. She lost and she and she fell and she can't shut up. She's still ranting and raving about stuff. No, you have to say no. I wish Mr. Wampo was here. He, doesn't, he shouldn't even be in that position. Tony George, the biggest failure as a mayor we had, and he's gonna try to stick us with her? No. And I think a lot of the council, when that, that report or when that investigation went on by the chief, that said it all. If, he's gonna, if you're going to put her on there, why don't you put her back in as chief? Let her wreck the rest of the police department. I'm just going to ask you to please, if you ever listen to me once, no. No, 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 no. We don't want her on there. I only wish Mr. Wample, my version of a Fuller Blush salesman, who is not but an insurance salesman, has got us sued because of her firing that poor cop who's going to get his job back soon. No, she caused enough trouble. Let her, let her, put her in a hot air balloon. Let her go to Australia or something. No. Anyone else on pending legislation? Yes, Mr. Troy. Uh, first of all, I, I just, since Ted is not here, uh, since I'm up for, uh, I'm nominated for this parking ticket appeals board, I just wonder if anybody know is this going to involve um, uh, moving violations as well, or just, um, you know, meter uh, appeals for meter overtime, or it's just, just that, no stop sign running or stuff like that, as far as you know? And it, I, I guess it, Ted's the only one who would know, right? No, it, it's going to be for the violations you would get from the parking enforcement guys that would be on the ticket. I think the kind of violations that you're talking about are more things that like police. a police officer yeah. would pull you over. That for. probably wouldn't enter so into the picture. If not all of it, the vast majority of it. it's just going to be, you know, that stuff. Parking that, tickets. The, yeah. Uh, and just in regard, Chief, I don't know if you can answer a couple of questions on all this equipment that's being purchased. Um, since it was purchased through CD funds. I assume maybe you can comment on this, Mr. Henry. That, for instance, the uh, purchase of the ambulance for 169 grand is a lot of money. I don't doubt the need for the ambulance. I, I'm assuming we needed it. Uh, it's not a lease; it's a purchase. So, was this? Did this have to be put out for bid, or or was this? 
Uh, as well, I got a couple other questions on the on other. If you want to just wait till I have the other ones. But okay, yeah, just is that all right? Uh, Friedman Electric too. Um, I didn't. This is news to me. I know they've they've provided the city with other equipment, and I didn't realize they were in the fire equipment business. Uh, Forty two hundred dollars, and it may seem not seem like much, but it, it's significant. Um, maybe you could be more specific as to what the city is getting from Friedman. I, I just in the dark, and I, I think council would want to know that too. When you guys, uh, uh, I, I didn't. I know they have they sell fixtures and electrical equipment, but I didn't know they sell stuff. I, I assume that's related to what they, um, you know, the electrical stuff is possibly part of this. Uh, and all of the other, uh, the uh, other purchases, I, I assume. Uh, since it is from the CD office, did not require a, uh, a any any uh, low bidding uh, process. Correct, Chief? Correct. Uh, okay. So wait, wait can you uh, maybe just fill us in on the Freeman Electric deal and the and the ambulance? Uh, well, maybe you could just comment on the ambulance. Was that the best deal, as far as you know? 100? Sure. I'll start with the ambulance. Um, first of all, uh, City of Wilkes-Barre participates in the Pennsylvania CoStars program. CoStars, yeah. It's a cooperative purchasing program that guarantees municipalities the lowest price on equipment, vehicles, uh, several hundred or, of thousands of items that we may need to buy. So that guarantees us a, a certain price on wow. these items. Uh, with the annuals, we did um, look for quotes. We went to two different manufacturers. Uh, the only two manufacturers in the country that provided the type of animals that we were looking for. Uh, the, the two quotes were relatively close, and we went with the lower quote. Uh, both quality ambulances, uh, $169,000, see, it is a lot of money. Uh, ambulances could go upwards to $250,000. Um, the city still does provide ambulance service, even though the mayor contracted with, uh, I forget the name of it, to, um, Trans Transmit ambulance. Yeah, yes. yeah. Trans still Transmit. Runs about 11,000 11, ambulance calls a year. I see. Uh, just, that's just the city calls alone, and there's probably a thousand on top of that that mutual way between Transmit and the other municipalities that help us out cover the other ambulance calls when we're committed. As yeah. far as Freeman Electric, uh, Freeman Electric is also a CoStar's participant. Ah. So for a rescue truck, we need power tools and hand tools. And it's included in the resolution, an itemized list of what we're purchasing. Um, battery operated saws, drills, hand tools. That's the kind of stuff you're getting from the... Yes. Let me see. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Anyone else on pending legislation? Ms. Joseph? Linda Joseph. I would like to address council on my nomination as a member of the parking ticket appeal board that will be coming up for a vote in a few minutes. For those in the public who may not be aware, this position is a non-paying volunteer situation. It is not another position with salary or benefits. I have seen on social media today by Councilwoman Gilbert that she is concerned that I could not be objective in a position on this board as I am, as she puts it, close to this administration. I am neither a family member or close friend of Mayor George. Contrary to popular belief, all people of Lebanese and Syrian descent are not related to each other. I am totally baffled as to how being a resident who has repeatedly shown my desire to make our city better deserves to be portrayed in this way. Questioning my motivation? It is an insult to insinuate that I would be biased in my decisions on this board in whether a parking ticket is valid or not. A parking ticket. The administration is not involved in this decision in any way. The board will decide on each matter individually brought before us and will make the final decision. 
First of all, three people will meet with residents appealing their parking tickets. The reason for three is so that if there is a conflict of opinion, two of the three will be the deciding factor to deem the parking ticket valid or that it should be voided. No one is making a decision on his or her own. In fact, that was my first comment to administration when I was asked. This should not be a one-on-one -on -one meeting between any member of the board and a resident. My second comment was, how do we all know the rules and ordinances to follow? I was told we will be receiving everything that we would need to make a fair and informed decision. Council has asked many times for volunteers for the various boards throughout city government. It is apparent that Councilwoman Gilbert's, Gilbert's dissatisfaction with city administration is influencing her voting, even when people come forward to offer their volunteer time to help in any way they can. Sadly, this has become an unfortunate pattern. I sincerely wish to serve on this board and hope you see the value in those wishing to volunteer. Thank you. Anyone else on pending legislation? I just want to make one comment. My thoughts had nothing to do with your dissent, first of all. I have no idea whether you're Irish, French, whatever. I have no clue. But that had nothing to do with that. That's it. Anyone else on pending legislation? Any other comments? Mr. Zakowski? Uh, John Zahosky, I, I just want to be on the record. Uh, I don't have an issue with uh, Chief Lundacki personally or anything like that. I just have an issue with another member, another person who uh, donated to the mayor's campaign being put into another position, paid or unpaid. You know, I think that it just seems that the, a lot of these paid and unpaid positions are being stuffed with people that are on, are, can't, can't contributed to the mayor's campaign. I, I think that's a problem. I think it's happening way too much. Thank you. Mayor Sikowski, anyone else on pending legislation? Thank you. Tony. Tony, I think this man wants to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, please come forward. State your name, please. My name is Adam Cottle. And I'm sure a lot of you do know me from social media. Um, I'm a big advocate for reform, and I just want to start off by saying this officer right over here is impressive. Uh, I think he is, we need a lot more like him. Uh, dancing cops. This is pending legislation. I know. Uh, well, this was from 2016, the decriminalization ordinance. Yeah, but this is it's, no. it's okay. what we vote on today. You can say this in when you come back for public comments. Did you fill out a sheet, yeah. sir? Yes, I did. Yeah, you can do that then. This is about okay. appointments or the fire trucks. <laughs> okay. You can come back after the end of the uh, okay. voting session. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, first uh, matter of uh, official business is the consent agenda resolutions. Uh, again, that would be minus the third resolution that's listed on the consent agenda regarding the parking ticket appeals board. Uh, that will be taken, uh, the appointments will be taken separately, three separate resolutions after the consent agenda. So uh, the consent agenda needs a motion, second, and a vote. Mike Merritt. <coughs> Bill. Okay, Mr. Barrett. Yes. Ms. Ms. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Merritt. Yes. Mr. Belasco. Yes. And Mr. Brooks. Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have uh, the individual resolutions, and the first such resolution is relative to Linda Joseph's appointment to the Parking Committee Appeals Board. Motion second and vote. Motion. Second. Mr. Belasco and Mr. Merritt. Mr. Barrett? Yes. Ms. Gilbert? No. Mr. Merritt? Yes. Mr. Belusco? Yes. And Mr. Brooks? Yes. Motion passes. Second is in relation to Sam Troy's appointment to the Parking Ticket Appeals Board. Motion second on vote. Bill? Motion? And Beth? Okay, Mr. Barrett? Yes. Ms. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Merritt? Yes. Mr. Belasco? Yes. And Mr. Brooks? Yes. 
motion passes also. And third is the uh, appointment of Marcella Mundaki to the Parky Ticket Appeals Board. Motion second and vote. Motion. Okay, Mike Merritt. Second. Is there a second? Okay, um, no second, so motion uh, fails for lack of a second. Presentations from uh, members of council, Mr. Barrett. Uh, the only thing I have addition, in addition to what we discussed on Tuesday is just a reaffirmation of my belief on the fire department patrols. And uh, as I stated previously, I'm not <coughs> all in agreement with it. I think it needs to end. Uh, I think that it's misuse of equipment and our staff, and I'm very concerned about both. More importantly, our firefighters, but again, just reiterating this equipment is not designed to be patrolling the streets. It's firefighting equipment. It's designed with one purpose in mind, not to be driven around the streets randomly. And the same thing with our firefighters, who uh, we want to be, as evidence tonight, we all voted to uh, acquire this equipment. We're all in agreement with that. We want the best staff and best prepared department that we can have. And by having them randomly driving around streets looking for God knows what is not serving any purpose whatsoever. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. As I said, the last council meeting, I concur. Uh, Ms. Gilbert. Um, yeah, just a few things. Um, can we get a no parking this side of street sign on, it's right next to 243 South Sherman Street? There's been a lot of vehicles parking up on the sidewalk there specifically. What was the address? 243 South Sherman. No parking on a certain side? On this side? side of the street, yeah. And then between 43 and 31 South Mead Street, there's garbage in between the houses. 43 through 31 South Mead. There's garbage in between the houses. The code enforcement was up there once, but I don't think they saw the garbage in between the houses and it's starting to smell up the whole street. And then um, on the corner of Howard Street and South Sherman Street, there's some sort of a leak that's causing water to accumulate on the road. Um, Butch might already be aware of it. I'm not sure if he is, but uh, it would be beneficial if we could get that fixed by the time uh, winter hits. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Merritt? Uh, just one thing since Tuesday. Um, Joyce, can we get with Butch and see if there's any possibility that we could put a storm drain in uh, by the corner of North Penn Ave and East Chestnut Street? It doesn't look like there's any for the water to go in. I forgot to ask which on Tuesday yes. when he was here. And uh, I guess in the wintertime, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's it. It's true. Thank you. Mr. Belisco. Um, Tim, uh, 120 Carlisle is an empty lot. In the vicinity of 120, obviously it's an empty lot, so I have no address. But uh, it's an empty lot that's filled with everything you could imagine. It really needs a heavy cleaning out. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, is the lot what would have been 120 or next to 120? What would have? I'm guessing 120. Okay. There's a house 130 next to it, and then one back is like 180. I'm sure they'll be able to figure out yeah. when they get yeah, down. Yeah, you get there, you'll see the junk. Uh, thank you. Uh, public discussion, John Sarkowski. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to ask. I asked this last week. Uh, how often is the fire station on High Street closed? Uh, I, I, because we, we, we have the, co the fire department patrol, and does that give uh, does that give us less people actually sitting in the fire stations? And are those stations like I know I know I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the one on High Street has been empty for a while. I just like some kind of answer with that. Uh, what, instead of patrolling with these fire vehicles, can they just park them somewhere? I've seen them do it before, where they parked on the square or other places. I just think that would be a better idea. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, the answer to your first question, 
South Station is what we call ground out when we have the staffing to uh, staff the, the fire engine. Uh, most recently, it's probably been ground out 90% of the time. Uh, it's due to several factors, retirements, long-term injury illness, and different types of uh, family leave, sick leave, things such as that. So about 90% of the time over the past few months. And as far as the community fire watch, Fire engines do have an option of either driving around through the neighborhoods or they can park in, in parking lots, uh, any, anywhere they want. And uh, they can mingle with the public, uh, do some public relations while they're out. Um, it's, it's a pretty open policy. Uh, they're just mandated by the mayor to be out um, basically 24-7. Okay, so you're saying you guys don't have to be driving around, though. You guys could, is that your decision where you guys could just post up, stop somewhere and be somewhere instead of driving? Yes, we can, we can post, uh, just like the police will, will post on their patrols. Okay, I'm just from me, I, I prefer you guys did that, if you could. Thank you. Thank you. Adam McConnell. There you go, man. All right. Back up. Um, <laughs> so, sorry about that earlier. Now you can talk about anything you want to talk about. <laughs> so my, my issue is with the decriminalization ordinance from 2016, the one that passed unanimously for uh, paraphernalia. Um, I know that there's about three or four every single week that I tag most of you in. Um, and I, I just want to know uh, what the issue is because there was a Supreme Court uh, case, Holt Cigar Company versus the city of Philadelphia, um, where is the uh, where it says that creating local law with less penalties is not an irreconcilable conflict as long as local law does not permit what the act forbids or forbid what the act uh, permits. Um, so as long as you guys are charging a, a fine, um, it's still legal under Pennsylvania law and the Constitution. So I was just wondering why the police department isn't enforcing it like that. Um, have you met with um, Chief Coffey at all since yeah. he's I would recommend probably setting up a meeting with him um, because he's ultimately in charge of the department obviously um, and I think that if you sit down with him you'll you know be able to shoot ideas back and forth and kind of get a better understanding here what's going on so do they normally like not enforce ordinances that you guys pass um, the way that you pass them or is it just because of the, it's drug paraphernalia and they still want to criminalize it um, I can't. I'm, I'm not a police officer, obviously, so I can't really speak to that. Um, but I would, like I said, I would recommend a, a meeting with him. I definitely. It. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If I could just real quick touch on that, um, the city ordinances. I, I write a lot of city ordinances to, by the nature of my assignment. Um, our officers do a site for the ordinances mm -hmm. when possible. Um, it, it, different types of calls, different circumstances may dictate how, how an officer charges. Have you ever written a, a civil citation for paraphernalia? For the paraphernalia, no, I have not. Okay, do you know anyone in the, par the department who has? Yes. Okay. Yes, our, officer, our officers do use that. Okay. Um, you know, occasionally if we come across somebody maybe with uh, a needle or a pipe or something, yeah. and it, it's just a minor infraction or something, they will they will just file the citation as opposed to going with a complaint affidavit and going through criminal courts. and. Okay. It's, it, it, but they do, they do, they well, do use that. That's very much appreciated. And they do, do they I'd love use to sit on social media when I stop yelling at you. But thank you so sure. much. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Karen Komorik. I'm back for the stop sign again. And um, in May, I had requested that they look into a stop sign on the corner of Academy and Charles Street, which is the city-owned playground and a major school bus stop. And they said no. So in um, a couple weeks ago, when they were down at the Furwood Church, and I spoke with Mr. Freddy, and I asked him about it, and he said he would look into it. And the very next day, as I was walking, I see some kids and their parents or whatever on the corner and the, the bus is stopped with lights flashing, and somebody came flying down the street, didn't even make an attempt to slow down, right past the bus stop, right past the bus loading children. That's all. Okay. You've been to traffic. I mean, I know I, Mike and I were both there to support you in this yeah. effort. Um, 
They recommended signage, I believe it was. Yeah, we did. There's nothing there. Right. Um, nothing you know, there could, now, right? Nothing there now to do it. There. Right, the traffic Cross committee came back snow. and said <clears throat> no. But, um, I, mean, I think I they were going to put signs, you know, children at play, yeah. some kind of roadwalk markings, you know, slow down. They're not there now, no. no. Um, we'll have to look into We can it. certainly check with Bill Harris. Yeah. Uh, Karen, I'll be in contact with you, Karen, too. But so okay. let's, one step at a time, and let's see if we can get our ultimate goal. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Troy. Uh, my main concern is uh, going back to the act, if I get my acts correct here, Act 47, I believe, the hearing that was held in August uh, to, to determine whether or not the city should be accepted into the uh, uh, f program to uh, alleviate the fiscal problem, fiscal situation, the drastic fiscal situation. I attended that and spoke, Mr. Kavlovsky did, and several others. But I, I know that uh, Ms. Gilbert and uh, Mr. Brooks attended. I don't think the rest of you uh, council people attended. If I'm not, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. You did, you did come, Mike? Well, I'm glad you did. But my concern, uh, I'm not calling anybody out of this, on this. It's sometimes these things get misinterpreted. I'm not attacking anybody, but I'm just curious to know why none of you five bothered to speak either for or against it. I would like to know, that's all. You can maybe save that till my five minutes are up. Uh, I would think that there would, you must have had a good reason. I, I don't know what it was. But after all, this was a critical meeting. I, I, I would imagine Mr. Barrett and Mr. Gilbert were kind of happy with the results from what I read in the paper. And the rest of you maybe not so happy that you, you I think you two guys felt that we, it would have been better had the city been accepted into that program, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you can clarify or elaborate on that for the people in attendance here. Uh, I, would, I would certainly like to know. Be because, um, it, it, I, I mean, I, I guess, I, I do love this city. I mean, I was born and raised here. And, and I, I hate to see it going to pot, not literally. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, the budget, the, 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 budget the, finance, the financial situation is pretty precarious, as we all know. The financial pulse of the city is weakening. And I don't see this council as taking this too seriously. Now, you can disagree with me. That's why we're here. I mean, we, and that's why we have a democracy. Maybe you are doing something that will refute my point that I'm making. But what I would like to see personally, and I would make, like to make a specific proposal here and, and maybe see a reaction or two from you people. Uh, I was appointed by the mayor to what was called a revenue improvement committee. I, I guess you might have been aware of that. There was no approval necessary by council. I was just appointed. Unfortunately, I. I only went to one meeting, one I couldn't make, uh, one I went to and offered my suggestions. And after that, basically, the, the committee, I guess, was dissolved. Or was it Ted, Ted or the mayor didn't think that it was necessary for the committee to get back together. For whatever reason, I don't know. I, th I think it, it's, it's imperative that we all recognize, I mean, I'm sure you do recognize this, but the, the mayor claims we have a, we're facing a $3.4 million deficit next, as early as next year. That, to me, was shocking. Of course, the mayor's action in its, of itself was shocking to go to seek Act 47 help, uh, a bailout, you might say. And, and uh, I'm kind of glad with the result because it gives us, the city a chance to work things out on our own. And I'm making that, spe back to that specific proposal I'd like to make. Uh, can council, does council have the power, Mr. Henry, to appoint, I would think they do, it's just, just a, a committee uh, made up of citizens and maybe one council member. I think you're not allowed to have more than two. Or I'm not sure about that. Uh, that, that the, the committee that I was appointed, the Revenue Improvement the Revenue Enhancement Committee, didn't have any public citizens except me. It was all staff members, and, and plus Ted, of course, uh, kind of ran the thing. So I, I'm proposing that maybe we can get together some kind of uh, you know a committee to to. Uh, put our heads together to brainstorm. I don't think it's going to take a lot of ingenuity to, to offer. I mean, I have a solutions that I unfortunately don't have time to, to <coughs> offer tonight uh, to help with the situation. But if we could somehow get together and, and maybe council could, could uh, coordinate these meetings or, or, or attend them, even though you wouldn't be allowed to vote, uh, to, to offer some solutions on the revenue side and the expenditure side. So let me just in the time remaining. Uh, discuss this business that was brought up before uh, Mr. Hayward. 
can that be fixed, Mr. Henry? I, I mean, Ted, I guess, has the only answer that you, you could actually pass an ordinance that would, that would prevent an employee, once he, is, he or she is dismissed or resigns from a position, to actually have that p employee come back in another position. I think that an ordinance can be, can be passed to prevent such a thing from happening again from this. This was a sham, and uh, this was, was awful to me, that he could actually come back for a month and get this kind of a pension. It, it, to me, is, I mean, talk about taking advantage. That was to the nth degree. Uh, I, I think that's just a, a small tip of the iceberg as to what the problem is with the, with the whole pension system. I know we've got a lot of problems. It's, it's near the brink of bankruptcy. It's, it's tremendously in debt. But can we fix that pension system? And I would like, again, to reiterate the, the formation of the committee, if that's possible, uh, to, to talk about budget problems. And, and maybe you guys want to mention why you didn't see it fit to, uh, see fit to uh, give any input on that Act 47. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Any comments? Um, regarding not speaking at the Act 47 hearing, um, when I, I you were here. yeah, when I went to the meeting, I wasn't sure exactly what the format was going to be, so I didn't prepare any statements. But I did submit a written testimony after um, the oh, meeting. Did you make them? I, yeah, I submitted a written good. testimony, and so did uh, Representative Pashinsky and Senator Udichek. They submitted um, written testimony as well. Good. As far as I'm concerned, Sam. The administration told us you had to meet two or three criteria out of 11 uh, to qualify for Act 47. Right. And I was told we met those. Okay. And so you thought it was a done deal. I thought it was a done deal and it was basically for public presentation, ah. public comment. So. Yeah. So I too was here. You were um, mis misled. But exactly like Mike said, it, we thought it was a done deal. Act 47 would have did some good things for the city but it would have been some bad things for the residents. So I had some hope for it and also reservation about it. But most of what we do, all of us, is behind the scenes. It's not here. It's not at this desk. Is what? I'm sorry. I, I've talked to, I talk to the, the administration daily. Most of us do. That's good. We do everything behind the scenes. Just what happens here is nothing. This is just a vote and for, for the residents to come to us. But we, we're talking with the administration daily. And Sam, I haven't uh, researched the issues you brought up tonight. I would prefer to look at them before I would give you an answer off the top of my head. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Kotobowski. Get them cuffs ready, Kurt. Uh, Bob Kotobowski. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, I, I heard that uh, Mayor George is going to get the Dr. Christian Bernard Heart Association Award for his development of this new thing that causes heart attacks and firemen. And uh, I think I come up with a good idea. While they're, Chief, maybe while they're riding around, I'll even donate the tent and you get some uh, leotards or spandex for the guys and Sam could teach them yogurt to get that cardiovascular going, okay? I mean, because I mean, I hate to see these guys dropping dead of heart attacks, like uh, uh, cardiologist uh, Anthony George said. Uh, now, to get a little bit serious, uh, <coughs> The problem with the fire department, I'm going to ask this, this council to write a letter to the chief, or uh, acting commander, Coffey, to investigate to see if there's any truth that little political penguin Tom McGroarty went to certain firemen and said, knock the posts off or you're going to be on fire watch. That is wrong. He should not, first I don't know why he's even allowed in the firehouse. If that's true, this is a problem. And this is his style, and Bill could attest to that. Punish. And I am told that Tom McGroarty did it. We have to find out which firemen and offer them protection if they'll testify against him. That's how this started. These firemen are being punished because they complained about response time, I believe, up on Stanton Street. And I'm sure there's some council people that heard the, heard the same thing. So the only thing I could ask you to do is write a letter to Commander Coffey and bring some outside agency in or assign somebody from the police department to track these firemen down and see what charges we could bring against him and this thief, Tony George. These men are being punished because of their freedom of speech. But who is he? He's a state official. Who is he to go into our firehouses and do this? You know, he made the same thing about Butch Ferrati, that Butch Ferrati was going to be arrested by the FBI. 
Remember? Ferrari. You know? So he ran Ferrari. Remember? Huh? He's going to get indicted. I don't see him indicted. I wish Butch Ferrari would have sued him. Now, I want you to do something about that. This is costing us money every day. And every day those trucks are rolling, they're wearing, there's tear, wear and tear on them. And them trucks are not designed for these guys to be riding around. This is ridiculous. Another thing is, Mr. Hayward, Mayor George told me when he was running, I said, are you bringing him back? He knew if he brought him back, this pension would kick in. And he said to me, there's not a chance on earth that Jim Hayward is coming back in any capacity. Because it was my understanding that uh, there was another person who was supposed to get involved, and Jim Hayward was all supposed to also get involved, get hired. Because I know Jim Hayward was very mad at him. And this is, this is an outrage against the taxpayers. We're, we're getting taken free patching from Domino's, and yet we're, we're look at what that, that's going to cost the pension system now. Another thing that what I'll close on, I have a petition, rough drafted up. I will try to make it in for the next meeting. <coughs> And I'm going to ask every councilman and councilwoman to sign it to Mr. D. Pasquale to come in and totally investigate this pension system that I've been complaining about for years. And the proof was in the paper. Kathy Kane, $17,000 a year. Tom Layton, I can't remember exactly what his pension is. They, they counted the part-time service. We need a forensic thing done by them. And that's, I want either you are going to be with us or you're going to be against us. Because Tony George, all he'll have to do now is get one more term, and then he'll be able to collect another pension. We have to stop this. I mean, just take a look with all, like, well, I've been saying it for years. And if you get behind it and ask him to do it, it would be better than just me doing it. Because it's just totally unfair. Like Mr. Troy said, the pension system is a mess. A total mess. And that Hayward thing brought it out in the open. I mean, to come back here for a month, he's making more money retired than some people working two jobs do. People are outraged over this. There's no way that this should be allowed to go on. Now, getting back to the fire department, I'm willing to put up so much money for the leotards while you know, Sam could do the, the yoga for him. Get that cardio going again. You know what I mean? Because our Tony is worried about that bell. Did he ever think again, maybe a quieter bell so they don't have a heart attack? I've never seen something so ridiculous in my whole life is what's gone on here with this fire department. So, is there any chance that you could maybe write a letter to the uh, commander and ask him to bring somebody in to see if McGroarty did do this? Because that's what I was told happened. And I think some of you has heard the same thing. You pay attention. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> tell it. Any comments? That was my fault. <laughs> yeah, well you better pay attention too. <laughs> is there any chance that you will write a letter to Commander Coffey? If I, Mike, real quick, I don't think that's something that our boys, our department would handle. Well, that's well, what that I'm saying. That would have to be an outside agency. Yeah, what I'm saying is, is let Commander Coff, let these people here, write them a letter and get an outside agency in. And once they start digging, they're going to find a big hole. So if there's any chance, well, how will I know you are going to do it? I know where your car is. Is there any chance that you could do that? You've got to answer. Please? <laughs> I want some more. You All right, well, it. let's go do some yoga. Sam, I am regular. Right? <laughs> what you That's right. I'll fall apart. Okay. Thank you. Our next uh, work session is Tuesday, October 16th, and regular session Thursday, October 18th. Do you know how to turn it back on? Yeah, okay. I, I did that. I just made <laughs> I sure I knew how to do you. that. But just, uh, yeah, I just flick it back up to the other the side. Other way, yep. Gotcha. <laughs> so,